have pool noodles those go up on the cross bars um, bath mats old used ones or cheap ones that you can buy in the clearance section from a store those go on the back edge right here to help protect that before you can see some scratches here this is what happened before I started using the bath mats and then I also have a foam probably half an inch thick foam sleeping pad for camping but I just I use it to prop the keel the kayak on when I'm loading it and then these are 15 foot cam straps I prefer them over ratchet straps I used ratchet straps before but they um, send, tend to cinch down too tight and these these seem to hold better and are much faster I can it probably saves me 10 minutes just using those straps and then here is the kayak it's pretty much empty I have an extra paddle in the back but for the most part it's uh, pretty empty the seat and everything's out just so that I can get it up there I load that inside the car um, and then the, I have a 2012 Nissan Pathfinder and it's fairly tall it's not the tallest SUV but it's about as tall as me this does is it helps give you leverage when you lift it up so that you're not lifting the entire weight of the kayak and that's the, really the tip and the trick to this method is you're only lifting about half the weight so if this is a hundred pound kayak you're only lifting 50 pounds so that's what we're going to do um, you can see I put the camping pad the foam pad under the keel to help protect it because when you pivot it it's going to turn on the concrete you don't want to um, thin out the keel by having it scrape against that concrete. The other tip is to have a rope tied on the back. And then basically once you get it in position, just tie it. Simple overhand. One time is good. And that way, that prevents it from sliding when you lift it up, and it won't go any further than the length that you use. I use it about six, seven feet, and this is a 12 foot kayak, so about half. And I disconnect it from the cart. And because I use this cart, it's already angled up, but when I, um, I have lifted it up straight from the ground before. It's not too much different. But for the simplicity, it's perfect. Just lift it up. And then I walk it under. And you can see how tight that rope is. So it helps you slide. And then I just rest it on the bathroom. So 
that with one exertion of effort. Get it up there. Next. Your knees, not the back. I want to get on the pool knees. Chest picture, bow. And that looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tie these cam straps. What I like about these is all it is is this little this little clamp and then you got these teeth right here that grip into the fabric of the strap. There's no ratcheting and stuff. It's all hand tightened so you're not going to overdo it. So what I do, is I grab the, the heavy end, it's got padding around it so you don't scratch up your vehicle, and I basically do it under the crossbar. And then I just pull enough to get it across to the other side, and then I just toss it over, and toss over the other one. And you can see, you're basically just forming a U, and it pulls up onto the um, crossbar. Do the same thing on the front. Get it under the crossbar, pull enough to get across. Just toss. Now we go to the other side. So now we have your two sides. And it doesn't matter if you get twists in it. A lot of times people will purposely put in the twist to keep it from vibrating in the wind. Um, I just wrap it underneath this crossbar and then I pull this down far enough so that I don't have to stretch too much to get it and you just you feed this through this opening first to get it through and you press this to open Open that, and you just slide, slide this through. And I try to pull up as much slack as possible, and I pull this up. You want this clamp to be up towards the top of the kayak. Once it's up there, I hold this side and I just pull down and that's it. It's, it's cinched down. And then the next tip, and this is just for fail safe measures. The clamp usually holds. I only have to drive 10 minutes. So I just, I wrap it around the crossbar a couple of times. And then I leave a little loop and I just basically do an overhand knot to cinch it down. And then tie up the loose ends just to keep it from flapping in the wind. And that's one side. And then we will repeat the process here. Now sometimes you'll notice that the uh, the end of the uh, strap will start to get frayed and it'll get harder to push through these openings. Um, once it gets too bad you can just use a lighter and kind of melt it back down so it can go through. But I'm still able to get it through right now. So yeah, I don't need to... Uh, 
light it up just yet. Probably in about three or four more trips. So basically, loop. Loop it under the crossbar. Come through the first opening. Come through the clamp. Pull up all the slack and just get it lined up. Pull it to the top. And then cinch it down. I don't do it too hard because I don't want to warp the shape of the yak and I don't leave it up here maybe 30 minutes at the most so go around twice and on the third time just pass it through itself to give you that sort of extra peace of mind that it's gonna stay in place Pinch up the extra so it's not flapping in the breeze. And I mean, that's not going anywhere. And for dual purposes, this rope that I have tied to the handle back here that we use to help hold it together, we just use it as a bow line or a stern line just as another point of failure fail safe and I just it was simple not and it was this a half hitch I'm not sure what the knot name is but essentially that's the setup and it's not going anywhere not even I mean it takes some effort to even try and get it side to side but that's also the other point of looping it under and then wrapping it around you can see right here it's wrapped around that also helps keep the straps tied in so it helps prevent the sliding from side to side on this vehicle there's I mean can't go much wider that's about about two inches on each side maybe so it's not even going to slide very far even if it wanted to and then you just reverse the process to get it off just take everything off the straps the bow line leave about seven feet tie it back up and then you just walk it back. Now I will say after a day of paddling um, it is a little harder to unload it when I, when I get home but after some practice and stuff you just you kind of get used to what works for you how much effort you need to exert and so forth. And then that is how you load a kayak solo.